Hi, it's Richard Moore from Racing Profits Guides and we're down here at Lingfield Park with Neil Mackenzie Ross, the clerk of the course. And we'll move on a bit to the all weather if that's okay, Neil. Um, the poly track here obviously is your busiest um, surface that, through the year, around 70 odd meetings. Um, and you've just had it relayed, haven't you? You had a new poly track surface last year? Yeah, we put a uh, new poly track down um, in September this uh, in 2012. So yeah, a few months old now, having its first winter under its belt and, and so far so good. So far. And uh, what's the main difference have you noticed a difference in the composition of the surface does it ride differently I think I mean I think in, instantaneously the first thing is visually color wise it's it, it uh, is a lot lighter, a lot lighter than, than the old track had, had weathered over the years um, and it's very very sticky um, and there's a lot more and what's not more noticeable is the fibers which were in the original track but obviously over the years broke down but uh, um, very much more prevalent uh, at the moment and does the wax break down in it is that what breaks down over the years then because I know there was a problem at Wolverhampton where they had to have the wax redone wasn't it because it was starting to ball up yeah yeah, I mean, we have to say we were fortunate with the old tra uh, our old poly track, um, 11 years of it, and apart from routine maintenance, we never had to add anything to it or at all. Obviously, um, yeah, Wolverhampton, I think this essentially is what happened, is the binder, mm. the wax binder has broken down. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but, you know, we're obviously only in year one, mm. um, and at the moment, uh, you know, very, very, uh, very, very sticky, very uh, different, sort of just a different feel to it than, than, it, than it was before. Um, the old surface had been what 12 years was it had been down yeah there. 2001 wasn't it yeah 2001 mm -hmm. it went down yeah. Yeah. so and have you noticed it ride differently is it a bit slower a bit faster or does it naturally take time to bed in anyway I think they just need a bit of time to bed in I think initially it was uh, a little bit slower and that was reported back from the jockeys mm -hmm. uh, now though uh, the time's proving very consistent um, we we'll find it quite uh, easy to get it to standard from if you put some deeper machinery in it if you put um, the power harrow on it but we can bring it back up quite quickly to standard and talking to the jockeys of late you know they're very happy they can win from wherever and I think you can see that every day you know whether you're up behind in front um, no problem is it you know a very even track that's what there a lot of people say about Lingfield isn't it um, and the actual course itself it's one mile two furlong it's a loop uh, left-handed um, the only thing I've really noticed is what walking around it is that it, it is quite undulating compared to uh, some of the well all the other or whether tracks are very flat. Um, do you think that makes a difference to racing here? Um, I think, uh, to be honest, Richard, I mean, whether it makes a difference, I don't know. I mean, as you say, you don't really perhaps pick it up on the telly, and certainly when you, you come down that come down the hill, I have ridden around it um, myself just mm. to get a feel. Um, look, it's whether quite sharp. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is right. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, it's quite a. I think it's quite. A, Probably known, we're probably known as the quickest of the of all the, of the the four all weathers, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. And I think that yeah, I mean the one mile start. I mean that's at the top, very top of the hill, isn't it? Like the summit on the back straight. Um, so the one mile, seven furlong, six furlong, and five furlong. You'd say they're all downhill, aren't they? As you come out of the stalls. Yeah, ex exactly. And then you know, uh, sort of tight. It's quite tight bend, isn't it? Um, up by the five, uh, you turn around and then you're swinging down the hill, um, and round the round the turn into the home straight. Yeah. And uh, the longer races, obviously the, the longer distances, what's the longest race you do here? Two miles is it? Yeah, two miles is, is the longest. Um, potentially you could do more, but obviously there wouldn't really be the, the demand for those sorts of races. So then you'd have to actually go from, from the finish line, that, that slow climb up to the summit there on the back straight? Yeah, absolutely. I mean the two mile start is, um, is from the six, uh, um, six furlong start, you know, I mean, and then otherwise you, the uh, mile and a half down in the chute, uh, just off the, just off the uh, final bend. So, yeah. So they, do you think they're a bit more stamina sapping here than they would be at, say, Kempton or Wolverhampton? It's a good question, Richard. I'm, I, to be honest, I, I'm probably probably not best position to answer it. I don't know. I mean, it's a quick, tight track, really. So whether they are more stamina track, I mean, sort of fast surface. Mm -hmm. A question for um, George Baker and co, I think. I'll ask one of the trainers that, yeah, definitely. So um, the big races of the year, um, you said the winter trial in, the winter derby trial, is it, or just the winter derby that you call it in March? Yeah, winter derby in March, that's right, yeah, preceded by the winter derby trial uh, towards the end of February. Uh, but yeah, winter derby's got the Heaver Sprint Stakes on it, um, and also um, the Spring Cup. 
as well. So, you know, three decent races, two listed races and a group three. And who's the um, jockeys that you look for here? Do you think there's some good jockeys riding here? I know Joe Fanning's very good here. Yeah, Joe is. Uh, uh, George Baker, another one, another one I think. Jim Crowley yeah. very much and then Adam I mean this this winter Adam Kirby has been by far and away the man to to follow hasn't he seems to have it absolutely miles ahead in the <laughs> in the all weather jockeys isn't he? yeah I mean, he's been riding around here absolutely amazingly you know even two or three winners every day hasn't he and do you think the um, the tactic then is to to hold up and then come off that last bend or do they tend to uh, you know does it tend to suit a front runner here I think certainly in recent years the jockeys that is what they've been plan to do and come off that bend into the sort of middle of the track for that's not to say that I would say that you're any disadvantage by going on the inside uh, or anywhere else for that matter but it seems to be they're about to right, swing off that bend and, and come down the middle however as I said I think with the new surface of late um, considering it's how, how you know how very much it's in its infancy uh, certainly you've been able to win from from anywhere of late yeah and that's uh, that's what you want isn't it fair racing that's the main thing uh, so you don't think there is any bias and any track bias I mean people talk about it and the statisticians will look at everything saying oh so and so stalls better off um, you wouldn't say staying on the inside is a better position to be or no, I, I don't believe there is um, most recent stats I've seen draw wise that show you can uh, that actually amazingly even it sort is, of about 33 percent low 30 33 percent middle and 33 percent height so I think it's nice very balanced track yeah, yeah yeah I think that you know with often these things there is that perception and obviously jockeys want to be drawn uh, uh, low generally but uh, I think overall it balances itself out. Yeah, and it's, it's all about getting the position anyway, isn't it, in the race, so yeah, that's exactly. great. Um, and trainer-wise, I know a lot of, we were talking earlier about trainers, and we, we do, a lot of trainers do take their horses quite a long way and travel quite a way to get to Lingfield. I mean, David Evans is one we were talking about. Um, what trainers do you think, again, that you look for here and think, you know, he's, he's a trainer who definitely, you know, sends his horses here for a reason? Yeah, I mean, I think during this time of the year, during these winter months, I mean, the two, two, two guys to very much to look out for, oh, there's a few but uh, are the, are Ron Harris and Dave Evans um, from Wales I mean they do come up here day in day out with with you know three or four horses um, and, uh, and and do well as a result Mark Johnson you know is always one to to have on your side around here uh, as well um, so the, the, I mean there's three sort of straight to mind trainers definitely Brilliant. thank you very much for that and we'll move on to the turf flat if we can next